going guys? Welcome back to another Fly Time Friday. Tonight I'll be tying one of my favorite streamers and it's an articulated streamer. I'm using an Allen B200 bass bug hook in size 8 in the front and back and some 6 aught black thread. And we'll just uh, go ahead and attach that and work it back to the bend of the hook. Now we'll add some marabou for the tail. And I'll be tying this in black. It's Black's my most productive color for sure. Um, I don't know if it's just because I like to fish black and I uh, just fish it more, so, but it seems to do really well for me. And what I do is just uh, prepare the marabou by just pulling out the uh, very tip fibers there and fold all the rest of the fibers back. We'll go ahead and tie that tail in a little longer than the hook shank. And then just do some loose wraps to just fill in the body there with the rest of the stem. Attach some uh, flashaboo in now. Just straight black flashaboo, and it just has a little bit of sparkle fleck in it. It's nothing super flashy, but it just adds a nice dimension to the fly I really like. So we'll just take two strands of that flashaboo. Fold it over itself on the thread. And we're just going to tie that in so two strands go down each side of the fly. Okay, and we'll just pull all that back and cut it just slightly beyond the length of the tail. So now we're going to tie in some black wire. I'm using medium ultra wire. We'll just be to hold all the hackle down later on. And we'll tie in some black chenille now. Just trim a little bit off the card here and Pluck some fibers off the end, get it down to that core material, and just tie in that very core down to the bend of the hook there. We'll advance our thread forward and wrap that shinio up. Now we'll select a schlappen feather and we'll trim off the uh, fuzzy end. And just pull a few fibers down off the base, trim those off as well. And that gives something for the thread to grip to. And we'll tie that in right at a slight angle away from me. with the top of the feather on top of the fly. And that puts the good side of the feather facing forward how we want it. And we'll just open spiral wrap that back. We'll take our wire and capture the tag end of that feather with the wire. And then work our wire up the body. If you just go pretty quick, it won't catch too many fibers. This makes the fly much more durable. Because you're uh, securing that hackle stem down through the entire body of the fly. Instead of just one spot. And then we'll helicopter that wire off. couple 
wraps and we'll have to go back here and trim the, tie, the tip of that feather out right there. But this slapping is supposed to just lay back and be kind of flowy. It's not supposed to stick up like regular hackle and a woolly bugger would. So you want just to kind of slick back and And that's pretty much the back half of the fly. Pretty simple. Go ahead and whip finish that and add some uh, zapper gap. Pretty, that's the back half of the fly. So we'll set that aside and we'll get the front hook ready here. Same size, size 8, B200 from Allen. And now we'll go ahead and attach our connecting wire. I'm using 0.45 millimeter bead wire. This is just stuff from Walmart, but it's a uh, coated stainless wire. We'll trim a section of that off and go ahead and lay that on. Now we're going to actually add some eyes, some weighted eyes, and these are uh, Allen's brass eyes, size large. As you can see, they're kind of low key. They don't have any like painted eyes on them or anything. They're just a straight black nickel finish, which I like a lot. It adds uh, just weight to the fly without getting too flashy and crazy. Alright, so now we're going to add the beads onto the connecting wire. And these are just plastic beads I got from a uh, rigging supply store. But what those beads do is just add a little bit of separation and space between the two sections of the fly. And also give the uh, wire something to support it and it kind of creates a really nice tight loop also whenever you pull down here as you can see so you want to just keep everything straight in line and pull to where the fly still has room to move but it, there's just a really small loop right there so whenever you get that you can save that spot and start to secure the other part of the wire down. So when you get it right, the beads will just be solid in place there, and it will be a really small loop which will reduce fouling of this back half of the fly. So now, actually while that's still a little wet, we're going to Palmer some marabou to hide this connection and you can use black beads here they wouldn't show up as much I kind of like that color I think it gives like almost an underbody uh, belly color to the fly um, it's a color I just use a lot so it's up to you really bead selection you can also use glass beads um, if you really wanted to add weight to the fly you could use weighted like brass beads there but I think that would hinder the action of the fly a little bit but you can experiment with it, see what works. Uh, most people do use glass beads though. So I'm going to take out two marabou pieces, rather small pieces really, and just get the tips together here. And we're just going to tie these tips in and palmer it like you would hackle or anything like that. So. I used to add rubber legs to this fly 
But I uh, switched this flash view. I think it gives it a pretty cool dimension to the fly. And I don't think you would need both legs and flash view. I mean, you could, but I just stick with the flash view. And it flows a little better than rubber legs, I think. And looks a little bit more natural. But once we have two strands on each side, I'm just going to bring those back and basically cut them at the base of the tail of the trailer part of the fly. Okay. And now we'll add some more black wire. some black chenille tie that off just behind and keep that extra piece there and we'll select another piece of schlappen Okay, so now we're going to take that chenille that we left and go ahead and form a head out of it. So we're just going to work this chenille up and kind of figure eight around the dumbo eyes, do some like X wraps with the chenille, and just try to cover everything up as best you can. And just kind of create a little skull profile. Pretty much does it. Um, there's a reason I use uh, chenille for the head of this fly though. Uh, I designed this fly uh, when I was fishing a lot of spring creeks and these spring creeks had really deep pools and I was having trouble just getting the fly down really quickly because there wasn't a lot of room to strip and wait for the fly to sink. They were fast moving, uh, just small creeks. So it was kind of just a, a fly that I could use as sort of a jig almost and just throw it in there and it get to the bottom where the fish were really fast and get undercover really fast. And it would just get in that prime zone before any other fly, I had my boxwood. So I started tying a bunch of these and I've caught most of my big trout on this fly and this color and everything. So if you would use like a deer hair head instead of this chenille head, um, it would cause the fly to kind of suspend and float and not get down to the bottom really quickly. Which is good in some situations, but like I said, in that particular situation, this was the fly to go with. So it's pretty sweet fly, one of my favorites. Uh, probably my first fly I started really fishing streamers hard with. So it's uh, it's an awesome fly. Try it out, and I hope you have success with it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week for another Fly Time Friday.